On this week's episode of In An Instant, we are talking about a truly unique camera in the instant film market. It is an SLR style Instax mini shooter. That's right, it is the Nons SL42, an absolute beast of a camera that takes interchangeable lenses of all kinds, uh, truly holds a unique place in my heart. Speaking of unique places, we are here at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, the famous place where Stephen King conceived of The Shining. Uh, it is Stephen King's birthday today. Um, Although, by the time you watch this, it, I've, rec I've recorded it on Stephen King's birthday. It's not going to be Stephen King's birthday when I release it. Although, if you watch it one year from the day I recorded this, it would be... Drop a comment below if you're watching this on Stephen King's birthday in 2025. A kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben and this week we are talking about the Nons SL42 camera. An Instax mini shooter which resembles a 35mm SLR camera that inflated like the Garfield Thanksgiving Day Parade balloon. Fat floating feline in the sky, loves lasagna. Classic, classic cat, one of the most famous cats. This spectacularly odd entry into the wide world of instant cameras comes in the wake of other Instax mini innovations like medium format backs the Lomo glass shooters, the Mint TL70, an array of products which over the years have sought to diversify the shooting potential for the most popular instant film format. With the ability to mount virtually any lens onto the body of the Nons with adapters, the imaging potential of this dark horse doinker candidate basically knows no limits. Like, like Garfield around lasagna. <laughs> Guy really has, has like a huge problem. Like, Somebody needs to like check on Garfield. He seems not well mentally. If you think that this camera is a bizarre idea, you're not alone. The Nons business development manager Ding Sheng Wu said in an interview with Phobographer, quote, the name Nons comes from the first four characters of a non-smart. It is obviously not smart for us to make a brand new SLR at this moment, given the traditional camera manufacturers have been switching their main product line from SLR to mirrorless. And he also noted that as a fully analog device, it also isn't smart. There's no Bluetooth, there's no apps or whatever. It's literally just the camera. And the name is pretty cheeky and I tend to love cheeky little monkeys. And so I have a certain affection in my heart for Ding Sheng Wu for sure at this point. Uh, in fact, he may have just enrolled himself at Sweet Boys University. We are considering your application, Ding Sheng. We're considering it very strongly. Now, let's get back out into the field to get some thoughts on how this thing shoots as I put it through its paces in Colorado. We are here on a nippy morning just after sunrise in Rocky Mountain National Park. Here at altitude, well over a mile above sea level in one of my favorite places on earth. Um, I always come back to the Rockies every year, multiple times if I can, because this is truly a place to recharge. It is truly a place to find peace and it is truly a place to use my Nons SLR camera. So obviously one of the biggest benefits of this camera is you can use literally any lens you want. And I was testing what focal lengths looked best on this field of view because keep in mind, this is a medium format camera and you're essentially, most people are using 35 millimeter lenses on it. Um, so that introduces some degree of vignetting. Um, that's something that the company addressed early on um, when they released the second version of this camera. Um, there is still some vignetting on these pictures. If you're shooting a 50 on here flush on the body without any sort of extender or anything, it's extremely wide angle. It was kind of insane the first results we got with it with the 50 on the body. It just looked like almost like a fisheye lens. Um, so I was trying to figure out really what focal length worked best to limit that effect and I landed on the 105 millimeter Nikon f 2.5. This is a lens that's been in the family for generations so we may as well bust it out and put it on an Instax mini camera in 2021 because that's just like respecting our elders unlike anything else. Um, so again one of the benefits of this camera you can use whatever lens 
Also, you can use whatever filters you want. Instax being 800 ASA, that is very challenging for a lot of manufacturers to grapple with. With 800 ISO film, you're letting in a lot of light midday. That means you're gonna have to have either a really high aperture or a really high shutter speed. And a really high aperture can kind of negate the fun effects of these cameras where you can get that really shallow depth of field, you can get some bokeh. So the beauty of this camera using any lens and any filter is you can throw any old ND filter on the front here. So I have a Tiffin 0.9 filter on here. This is a three stop ND filter. That essentially means I can shoot 800 speed Instax film at ASA 100, which is really nice midday. One of the ways Nons attempted to combat the vignetting issue of the initial cameras was by adding this 1.8X uh, lens extender. This is an EF to EF adapter that uses glass elements, so it's really nice. They didn't just like throw some plastic extender in here. And basically it takes my 105 millimeter, 35 millimeter lens and multiplies that by 1.8, zooms it in a bit, limits the vignette a little bit more. It works, I think, even better with like the 50 millimeter lens that they supply. It's really kind of fun because you almost get two focal lengths with one prime lens. I can take the adapter off, I can put the 105 flush onto the body. Um, I have an EF adapter ring on it. And although that really brings that vignette into the mix, um, it's nice to just have that flexibility. So with this being an SLR and you being able to see the image you're shooting through the viewfinder, um, there are some challenges that you run into here with a prism that is this small on the top of the camera. So when you look through the viewfinder, you're seeing kind of a smaller field of view than the lens is actually capturing, which can make it kind of challenging to frame shots. Um, it makes it very easy to get shots in focus, which is kind of nice. But for example, with a 105 millimeter lens like this, my field of view in the viewfinder is really small. Um, so that is a disadvantage. I find with a lot of shots, I'm just focusing on what I think will be like the middle of the frame and then hoping the rest of my frame cooperates. And it has for the most part. Well, there's plenty more to discuss regarding this camera. I'm gonna throw you back to the studio. It's time for me to continue traipsing around the Rockies, breathing this fresh air, and trying really hard not to get gored by massive elk who are in rutting season and, uh, and are, they're kind of loud and their antlers are really big. So as you can see, I had some really interesting experiences with the Nons. I think I initially was having some trouble dealing with the viewfinder, which as I said, is a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view, does not cover the Instax mini format, but your brain sort of begins to extrapolate and you can acclimate to that. The overall design of the camera is also very fun. Um, and although it's a bit of a tank to carry around, the tactile mechanics feel Real, real good. To show you how this unique SLR design works, we're going to operate the camera with no lens on it here. So to see an image through the viewfinder, you slide this lever at the base, revealing the mirror. When you press the shutter, an enormous slap occurs, which is the sound of the mirror sliding out of the way and letting the light hit the film unit. This is a crazy design. You guys are crazy for this one. The shutter slap on this beefsteak is both jarring and satisfying. There is zero subtlety to the booming kerplunk that pops out of it. Uh, it literally rattles in your hand from the mirror's motion. And thankfully that doesn't seem to introduce camera shake, although at slower shutter speeds, I'm always concerned about that. So it might for some people. Uh, speaking of shutter speeds, you've got a normal-ish range of options on your dial from both bulb to one two fiftieth of a second. As I mentioned in the field, that's not fast enough to shoot with your aperture even remotely open outdoors. So you'll need an ND filter. But unlike something like the Mint TL70, the filters are obviously not proprietary. So they can be purchased affordably for any lens you use. You can even get real funky with it, kaleidoscopic with it, color filters, whatever your incredible heart desires, you big sweetie. This camera is manual, but it does have a very neat little meter on the top here. It gives you a pretty broad average light reading based on your shutter speed, but it is very specific about f-stop numbers, really digging into those decimals. Overall, I think that is nice to have, but I have mostly metered with either my human eyes or an external meter, especially given with an ND strapped on here, the reading presented on the screen will be not correct. I think something I'll really give this camera credit for is it feels consistent. The shutter speeds seem very accurate and it works the same way every time. For a third-party product, that's not always a given and I do appreciate it. The only 
The only like iffy whoopsie in some of these shots is what I'm guessing is a pressure point on the rollers that is imprinting these colored lines at the tops of photos. Even on the monochrome film, it's purple for reasons I explained in the in an instant black and white special, a portion of which was recently accepted into a film festival. <laughs> just, just something I'm proud of. Anyway, the lines don't really always show up and I don't know, I don't, I, I, just, I honestly don't really give a shit about that. It's sometimes happens on Instax mini film, I'll survive. Some last notes on the Nons. It has an internal battery that charges via USB-C. This is vastly improved over the Mark I of this camera. I have a friend who had the first model that I believe took double A's and this new lithium ion dumper in here, it rips. I, I think I've used this thing for like two weeks straight without a charge, so that's pretty impressive. You can buy this camera also without a lens, but there is an option to buy it with the lens uh, with a Nons branded M42 mount lens that uh, includes an adapter of your choosing, in my case, EF. I don't really know the origin of this lens. It is branded Nons 42, but if you somehow don't have a nifty 50 lying around, it might be worth an extra 50 bucks to buy it, to add it on. Uh, all right, I think we should just do the, I think we should just do the pros and cons. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like it's time to do pros and cons right now. If you're asking me, I would do the pros and cons right now. Pros, lensing. You can use basically any lens on a camera that shoots instant film. That's never been done, and as a result, the image quality is great. Instax is a really solid film, and this completely exhibits that. Product design, I think this thing just works. It does what it's advertised to do, and I believe the team behind Nons really cares about continually improving their product. And I kind of have a crush on Ding Sheng Wu. Cons, the viewfinder coverage is a little bit unfortunate. Given this is an SLR, the benefit of that is that you can see what you're shooting through the lens, but if that field of view is very far off, it's a bit problematic. Um, that line thing <laughs> from the rollers, it's also not great. And lastly, price. The Nons SL42 is an expensive camera. At $449, you're paying a premium for a nice product, but it shoots one of the smallest formats available, and that's going to draw varying degrees of interest as a result, as well carrying something around this large to shoot something so small. But like I said, I like this thing. And if you're on the fence about this camera, do keep in mind that it is indeed a certified doinker. It just is. There's no denying the doinkerosity here. All right, shout out to the Nons team for sending me the SL42. I've really had a great time with it and I will surely continue to be popping off with it. I found it particularly charming to use the Instax monochrome in here for a little bit of a different vibe on Instax mini and another thank you goes out to you. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and drop Garfield's furry orange gut onto that subscribe button. Check out the Patreon. Stay tuned for more views, breakdowns, shoots, and all things instant. By Ding Sheng Wu. On this week's episode of In an Instant, we're talking about one of the most interesting innovations in instant film in the last 20 years. This is the Nons Instax Mini Shooter, an SLR. Well, we got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it.